Hi, this is Marla. Welcome back. I'm so glad that you're joining me today. I have a card featuring two dies from Cottage Cuts, and I'm going to share a little designing secret that I use when I have a die that has multiple images and it seems a little bit overwhelming to me to try to use them all. I'm starting here with the happy birthday sentiment and then this is the one we're going to be talking about today. It's the Botanical Garden 2. You can see that there are two different flowers without any uh, stems and then there are two with stems there's some grassy pieces and some foliage normally i would uh, make this into a swag and try to build uh, or a wreath or something like that but i wanted to talk about how overwhelming especially for fairly new card makers that die cuts can be you get all of these little pieces and you're trying to figure out how you're supposed to use all of them cohesively on the front of a card. And I wanted to take the guesswork out of it for some people that might struggle with this like I did, especially at one time. And that is um, to make a decision to only use a couple of the elements. It's okay to repeat pieces even though there are like so many things that you want to use or that you're drawn to in that die, but it's okay to start the creative juices flowing by just picking out a couple of the elements. For my card today, I picked out a flower that looks like excuse me, a bluebell and then um, a grass piece. For the bluebells, I used a light purple and a dark purple. And then for the foliage part of it, I used, I think it's called like green parakeet or something like that. These are from Paper Tray Ink, the ink colors I'm using. And on the grass, I used like a mint julep or something like that. And so here I'm just using my precision glue press to add a little bit of glue to the tips of the stems so that I can add my little bluebells. Initially, I decided to cut three of the bluebells and then I ended up cutting like three or four pieces of grass. I like odd numbers when I'm creating a card, so the composition I like the composition to have odd numbers but in this case it just wasn't balancing out because I really was doing kind of like a repeat pattern so here I'm just adding some ink to the word happy this is just one layer I'm starting out with a kind of like a pink that has a touch of purple to it and then off camera for some reason I must have cut it out but off camera I did add a darker layer of a pink to the bottom half giving it an on ombre appearance so we're starting off with this first layer you'll see when I start stacking these because I do make it three layers deep that there is going to be a darker color at the bottom moving on to the word birthday I am going to add a lavender purple to the whole die cut and this again is going to have a little bit of that pink undertone and then once I finish with that birthday I will or once I finish with the lavender I'm going to bring in a darker purple for the bottom so there's going to be a gradient going from a mid-tone pink to a darker more vibrant pink a light lavender and then a darker purple so I've added the additional um, two die cuts together and we're going to stack our ink blended die cut to the top of this. So again, this is going to be three layers deep. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the word happy. I really love my sentiments, especially to have a little bit of bulk to them. And so this is one of the ways that you can do that and that sentiment can stand out. So this precision glue press, I've talked about this before. It's really a purchase that I have enjoyed. I purchased it at the beginning of summer and I wasn't sure whether or not it really was going to be the um, 
the tool in my craft room that was going to be a game changer, but ultimately it really is. I just really enjoy using it. It has a very fine tip. It's easy to control, um, much easier than squeezing a bottle. So I have a piece of 80 pound accent opaque cardstock and I have a lace stencil from my stash. I want to add a little bit of interest to the back. Now we've kept this pretty simple because we only have two die cut images that we're going to use, the grass and the flowers. And then the happy birthday is going to take up the larger portion of the card. So adding a bit of stenciling to the back is really going to create a little bit more interest on this card kind of liven it up and with the lacy stencil it's going to add just a little bit of fanciness to it I'm doing a reverse ombre so you notice that the word happy which is obviously going to go on top of birthday is in pink and then birthday is in purple this time I've added a darker purple a mid-tone purple and then I'm going with some lighter pinks the pinks that I'm using are not the same pinks that I used on the happy birthday and uh, you're going to see that this is really going to have a nice softness behind the images so it's not going to blend in it's really going to complement it but it ended up being just a little bit too soft for me I felt like the happy uh, at the bottom that raspberry color that there wasn't anything that was tying it in the purples are tied in with the bluebells but the pinks were not being the dark pink wasn't being tied in here on my mat I do have some gouache you can't see it um, I've added some gouache spritzed it with water and I'm just adding a heavy dose of splatters or spatters to the die cut pieces i really love this look this is something that i do frequently and so again trying to be it it kind of at initially it will start soaking in and so i just add a couple of layers i want to apologize for that bounce my camera when i turn it on i always forget to wait to start my card but my camera when i turn it on um it it bounces and so I'm sorry if it's making you sick when I turn my camera back on but um, I, I usually don't do a card in one sitting I do it in pieces for whatever reason so there are the corners of that die cut and I wanted to add that darker pink to the back side so that it's going to add that darker pink to the composition but it also will help draw your eye in so rather than going back over the lace with darker colors of pink I just added it to the corners and again that's just going to draw your eye to the center I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of mint julep cardstock so the cardstock does coordinate with the ink any ink colors are going to work the the point of this video is to show you that you don't need to use everything in a die cut that you can simplify things before um, you really start delving into more detailed projects so here I'm trying to get my sentiment on because that is what we're going to be building around I'm just going to repeat the pattern of the flowers and the grass at the bottom we talked about how I have seven pieces here I have four pieces of grass and three pieces of the flowers I do end up changing my mind I do break my own rule here usually I like those odd numbers but I just felt like it was not balanced well at all I did not add double layers to any of this die cut so the, the grass does not have a second layer the bluebells it's all just one layer that I'm adding but I'm not gluing everything down so that I have a little bit of lift with all of the pieces so that they're kind of flowing and they're not stationary on my card so I'm starting with those bottom pieces. I will add the little bluebells. That helps me building from the bottom to the top. It's going to help me place my sentiment where the bluebells aren't covering them up.
So I'm gonna tuck this one to the left side and then I'm going to strategically place the third one in. I was thinking I was gonna fit it between two pieces of the grass and again, I just didn't like the balance because I was doing a repeat pattern and I wasn't mixing different flowers together. It was just one flower. I just, I felt like it just wasn't meshing very well. And you know, it's okay for us to change our minds, right? When we're creating a card. I'm just eyeing this. I do not, um, I'm not using a T-square ruler, which is probably a preferred method. But because um, when I cut out the word happy and I mentioned that I did do the stacking and showed you the stacking to get that dimension, um, the peas are two different sizes. I thought that they were exactly the same, but I started gluing some together and then uh, I realized that they were actually two different sized peas. And so I had to cut a couple more out and re-glue the white ones together so that they were matching. And so you might wanna be mindful of that when you're creating with these pieces, but because they're whimsical, and they're not the same height, it didn't really matter whether or not they were stacked perfectly because, or whether they were laid out perfectly because they do have a little bit of a whimsical feel to it. So I wasn't too concerned about this being too, you know, a little bit wonky. I'm, I'm not always the best at getting things straight, but with something like this, I just prefer to go with the flow. If you haven't uh, checked out the Cottage Cuts design team blog, there are um, a couple of designers on there that are creating some amazing summer cards. So I would encourage you to check that out if this is uh, something you're interested in. It is just look up the Cottage Cuts blog and it will pop right up in your search engine. So here I'm adding that final little flower. Again, I'm not gluing all of the flower uh, pieces down, just the bottoms of the stem, tucking them in behind the grass. And that's going to complete my card for today. So I hope this gave you a little bit of encouragement. If you struggle with die cut pieces, here's a look at my finished card. I wanna thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.